right, guys, Jeff Allen off the gridiron, and uh, what we're seeing this summer at all these campgrounds and, uh, and parks, too often campers are coming back with bags of wood from the, uh, the park store, park office, and nothing more to process it, certainly no axe, no, uh, no hatchet, and they think they can get it started with a little few leftover paper towels from their dinner, a lighter, and uh, somehow getting these big logs to start. We're going to show you how to process all this bag of firewood up and get a good fire starting using nothing but your pocket knife. Stick around. Hi guys, welcome back. Jeff Allen off the green iron. Okay, when I go through a bag of wood, a couple of key things I'm looking for. Finding the driest piece of wood for sure. I'm looking for wood that has um, lots of um, maybe loose bark on it that can be pulled off by hand. Uh, I'm also looking for any pieces of um, you know, pieces of wood that have split that can also be pulled off by hand. Again, this is how we start collecting some of these smaller pieces of tinder for the fire okay and we haven't even picked up a tool yet so as we collect this and peel the visible pieces that we can feel and pull off this is some of the, the basis for the, the fuel and kindling we can just kind of set that off to the side for now after that I sort out pieces of wood that are going to be too difficult to split these ones with large knots they uh, typically are more dense and are good burning woods, even though they may be a soft wood. Again, this one is very dry and that will be able to be uh, split and broken with fair, fair amount of ease. So we'll come back to that one in a minute. I often take one that has the straightest grain. And what you can do as well is take your knife and with these strands off to the side, you can just kind of work your knife through them and start pulling off those finer layers of wood. After you've done that and everything else remains lodged on the wood, you find an edge. Okay, this edge can be removed and then we're going to find uh, a nice, comfortable piece that we can hold on to, and this is going to be our kind of our hammer, um, you know, our uh, strike baton, and we can baton using our knife, holding it on that edge, and baton down through that edge and get small shavings off like this. And then we can find another corner. And we don't have to go too far before we can find that it'll split split off the wood fairly fairly easily. With any number of those collected, that's our next level of material. With any one of these, we can also start shaving and making feather sticks. Just take shaving those fine shavings down and making very fine curls like that and those will also light up very readily. Again here's some more wood with some, some pieces splintered off already and this is where you have to take your time and prepare your fire. There's nothing worse than throwing on a match starting that barbecue lighter, have all your paper burn up, and nothing else to show for it. This is again a very narrow piece that we can put on, put a knife on the corner, and very quickly put on, put on through. Okay. 
So we've only been at it a few minutes, but we've got various grades of wood, everything from our lighter materials all the way up to some heavier materials. And then from there, start with your smallest pieces around your fire. After that, I put on the wetter and more denser materials with knots, and they tend to burn a little longer. Once you're ready for your fire, you have to prep the, the fire pit, making sure that there's no, no um, you know, plastics or burnable, non-burnable garbage in there. Uh, you want to remove any material that is that is green, and if if you can't do that, then just create um, a base on the bottom of your pit, onto which you're going to put all your flammable materials. So sometimes you have, again, the leftover leftover paper. Um, you may have some leftover. Kleenex or newspaper, paper towel, paper plates from dinner. And because these are multi-ply, sometimes you can increase the surface area by pulling them apart and fluffing them up. You want that heat, that fire to take, uh, <clears throat> take hold and get as many, many things in the fire lit as possible. I'm putting my driest, small, fine pieces on top, being careful not to smother it. We've got our feather stick, we've got some of this finer material, and then we're going to surround it. Too, too often people think that the, 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 the old term, the teepee fire, is it works the best, but it's not, not for all cases. So we're going to break this fibrous material up. And again, you want the smallest material toward the center with the larger material toward the outside. So we're going to keep going around. And some people call it a log cabin fire. Um, there's so many different ways of, of doing it. I like just cross hatching, put the fine material in the middle. And as the bigger material on the outside takes and your fire becomes bigger, then you'll have uh, a better, better fire. <clears throat> Breaking down that material. You want lots of air in there as well. Sometimes you might have some leftover birch bark. Birch bark's great because it can actually light and stay lit even when it's wet. And then you have our other materials standing by. I often just include them in the fire pit just so they're handy. And then the next sizes of log also standing standing by. Something like that. Again, cardboard. You can put that in there as well. That will take secondary, probably next to the paper, uh, once things get started. So all going well. We should be able to light this and uh, and have some success. So the paper takes takes hold first, followed by the finest finest material. And sometimes I just once it takes, I adjust the the other pieces just to capitalize on that heat on that fire. And you see the fire is starting to catch on the, the larger pieces in the cardboard. I like to keep moving around and supporting that growing flame with some of the smaller pieces of wood. We still have lots of paper and cardboard left. It hasn't fully taken just yet. I'm aware of the wind as well. As this fire grows, we want to continue to feed it and give it the opportunity to reach and grab, grab hold and take and uh, light some of these smaller dry pieces of firewood. It's kind of like a game of Jenga. You take, take from the bottom and put it on the top when you can. There we go. 
go. That's a good start to uh, getting a good base of good fire started. And get the marshmallows ready. We always like to leave the fire pit burn for quite some time just to make sure there's no residual leftover plastics or uh, hazardous waste in the in the fire pit. Not that there'd be actual hazardous waste, but just uh, any other non-burnables that are lingering from previous campers. Even at this point, some wet or green wood would be would be suitable to put on there just so it can start to grow. I think that's going to take. Well guys, thanks for watching. We took uh, this bag of dark firewood and with nothing but a jackknife we got this fire going, processed it down, a little bit of awareness and knowledge about the pieces that come in your bag and uh, before long you're ready for the marshmallows. Anyways, Jeff Allen off of Green Iron, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed today's video, don't forget to click like, subscribe, share and uh, enjoy your outdoors. Bye.